Yeah, dance, fool, dance. I didn't bring my shoes. Huh? Yeah. That's don't tell me. Nothing. It'll just look like a Michael Flatley. I don't want to do that. Ain't no hooks. I'm the Mexican. Stuff like that. 
Get out of here. Offer California pizza. <laughs> yeah. Real deal. You, there's like, hey Rock, you want to go to a Dodger game? I go to Dodger Field. They do not even play it. A lot of times I don't know. But do you really, really got a cookbook? Yep, yeah. sir. Sure do. Wow. My fan, my fan page, my Facebook fan page has two sample recipes with like prison drawings and photos and two stories and stuff. So you didn't share it, you'll dig it. <laughs> yes, ma'am. Um, what is an acceptable age for children to watch Boondock? Because my seven-year-old, it's his favorite movie, and people kind of think that. Well, it's already rated R for one. You know, it, it completely depends on the kid and the upbringing. Well, St. Patrick's Day, he comes up to me. He was like, "We need to watch Boondock Saints because it's St. Patrick's Day." He's seven, and I was just like, "Right on." So we watched it. That's my you know, there, there's some 10-year-old kids that are sheltered in five, and there's some five-year-olds that are open in 12, you know? I leave that up to you. <laughs> I will not endorse anything like that. Should they be traumatized, you come back going, No, they love you. Yes. How do we feel about the Yes. God bless them, man. I mean, everybody. You know, I, I mean, seriously, guys, if, if, if there's anything that you do that gets publicly rec recognized, it's, it's, it's a truly humbling feeling. You have no idea what it's like to, you know, I held my phone up and I made a little vine of this crowd, but you have no idea what it does to the soul when you see a couple thousand people applauding you because you've done something in probably the most expendable industry known to man. In an economic collapse, we're fucking unemployed. You know, doctors, teachers, they're gonna always have a job. People in the food service, the clothing, people have to stay warm, but we're the first ones to go. And to have people show up, just to have a long line to wait to tell you that they love what you did, is, it's stunning to say the least. And it moves me so much that I will keep on going after this room clears out. And thank you. Um, uh, you just got dumb. You got. You went on uh, the Devil's Carnival. How was it working on your first musical with, uh, especially the veteran actor Paul Sorvino? It's killer, man. That was a wonderful thing to do. I mean, ideally, just because now I can tell people, you know, yeah, I got a single on iTunes. You know, it's kind of cool. It was, uh, it was neat. You know, uh, Repo was a hugely successful musical, and then them doing the second part with all the requisite players involved. It was, it was cool. And I think the product that they turned out at the end of the day, the movie, I'm really proud of it. It's bizarre, it's weird, it's interesting, it's all of that, you know? On the day, shooting it was one of the trippiest experiences of my life. We shot this in complete crackville. It's, it's Riverside, California, it's the crystal meth capital of the world. You can't make that shit up, that's true. Like, I, I, some weird shit happened. One time, a bunch of 15-year-olds stole all the laptops and ran. Uh, they, it was a whole ordeal to get them back. One time we wrapped at like six o'clock in the morning, and I went to this liquor store. And um, you stupid, you rap, you're half tired, you've been working 14 hours. I pulled into a liquor store. I was in there. I had got my Nessie chocolate milk and my payday, and then I looked up and I was like, I should not fucking be in here. It was just the seediest, you know, bars on the windows to keep you from breaking in or breaking out. There was a dude that was half a alive behind the register and some chick with like one tooth and an oversized jacket and like these leggings with holes in them and I smelled when I passed her something but there was an aroma I've never smelled before and there was a dude with a NASCAR Tony Stewart jacket on right next to a big brother they're just mumbling and I got my payday and I'm waiting in line and she turns to me she's eyeballing me she's hustling she's eye fucking me and I'm like oh fuck man and I'd already pulled out like a $20 bill to pay for it. I'm like, oh, shit, I shouldn't have even pulled out a 20. And it was just a bad scene. And she looks at me and she goes, she did <laughs> I I, 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 is she fucking talking to me? And she goes, is she Jaika? I said, uh, is I Jaika? She goes, no, is she Jaika? I said, is I day? No, is you day call for the kill the man? I'm like, is it? Oh, shit. Am I Darren Call from Criminal Minds? I did an episode of Criminal Minds. My character's name was Darren Call. And I was like, oh my god. I'm like, yeah, yes, I, I 
played Darren Gull in Criminal Minds. I'm like, she said, I'm not a lady! <laughs> and the big dude in the Tony Stark jacket behind her go, uh huh, that's right. I was just going, oh fuck, this turned like 180 degrees around. And she goes, I know that before was easy. Look at that day car right here. And I thought about it, I'm like, that's crazy. You, 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 you must watch that show religiously. I mean, to, because I did one episode, it's been on for 86 years. There must be 700 episodes. Do you remember? She goes, no, I always use a tape in all my VCRs. But my VCR broke, and I can't get the tape out. The last one was your episode. My TV don't work. So all I can watch is your day call on the TV. I was like, A lot of time we watch that. <laughs> oh shit! <laughs> I took my quick, my payday, and I scrambled out. It was the trippiest thing I've ever heard in my life. <laughs> True story, man. Yes, in fact. Last question. We gotta wrap it up. What's the greatest prank you've been a part of on set? The greatest what? Prank. prank. The greatest prank on set? Oh, I wasn't pranking. <laughs> Prank on set. Okay, when we wrap Boondock number one, it's customary to give rap gifts, right? Redis is there, you know, we've known each other for a while, but there's a, a, an American Winchell's Donuts, or a, a, it was a Dunkin', I can't remember to be honest, but I bought him a dozen donuts, and I went on my like, Redis, dude, got you some donuts here, man. He's like, oh, that, cool, thanks, man. You know, a little bit of a, you know, Weird rap gift, but I gave it to him anyway. Next day I come up and the dunk that doesn't still there. We're in makeup, I'm like, dude, you eat the donuts? He's like, no, I'm not, you know, I'm gonna, but I'm, 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 I'm gonna get to him, man. Yeah, thank, thank you, thank you. That's what he said, Dude, gotta eat the donuts, man. They're fucking Winchell's or Dunkin's, whatever they were. He's like, yeah, I get them. Next day I come up and I'm like, Gene, I'm like, oh no, I'm like, did you have breakfast? He's like, no, I'm like, let's have a couple donuts, man. It's for the breakfast. He eats a couple donuts, I'm sipping coffee. He's like, yo, I'm like, nah, dude, I, just, I had a dozen for myself. I'm later. Uh, okay, next day I come back and Jeff some donuts. He's like, dude, I think they're stale. I'm like, nah, dude, they keep for a long time. Have some more donuts. He ate like three more. He had like six out of the dozen, right? We wrapped, shook hands, everybody hugged. I got home a week later, I sent him an envelope with a Polaroid in it. I'm sitting in a Barca lounger with my trouser worm around the claim. <laughs> to feel you guys, the comment, you guys, just all the warmth and the love. It's amazing to see a room fill up like this. And... Yeah. Thank love you guys, man. Thank you so much. Thank you for